So let's talk, we're gonna talk about some big global problems. This is the problem of adult literacy. So one in five adults worldwide doesn't know how to read. Uh, that's, that's an astonishing figure. That's, in some parts of the developing world, that's as many as 80% of adults. So two thirds of those women don't know how to read. And so when we're trying to figure out these folks know how to read, uh, design that matters, I mean, a billion illiterate adults is a problem, but from a, prop, from a design perspective, that's not a problem statement. So for Design That Matters, we have to start by understanding, well, who's trying to solve this problem? How do we make them more effective? So this is a picture of a nighttime adult literacy class in uh, Mali run by World Education. So they're a Boston-based organization that teaches nighttime adult literacy classes in 27 countries around the world. And uh, what you see here, most of the light in this picture came from the flash. Uh, all of these women are sharing this single lantern. There's another 30 students in this class. Uh, so, I mean, this is the problem. One in five adults don't know how to read. This is another picture from the classroom. So what we're seeing is that uh, what you can't see in this picture are the other 30 students who are sitting in the dark. Uh, this, OK, so maybe this worked for Abe Lincoln, the whole kind of get back to your pioneer spirit. But as a way to teach 30 adults, this is not as efficient as it could be. So again, I say we start with a problem statement. Our problem statement was looking at this, clearly there's a need for lighting. The other obvious thing that jumped out at us was books. A lot of the books that these students are using are actually printed in Boston, shipped to Mali, and distributed to these rural classrooms uh, at great cost. This is the Sahara Desert. The books don't last that long. So books and lighting. How are we going to solve this problem? Uh, well, this was our prototype. Uh, and it, for some of you may have gotten to see this upstairs. So what's the idea here? We're trying to solve the problem of books and lighting. In terms of books, we started looking at all kinds of technologies, computers, other ways to efficiently store lots and lots of books. And what we found is that microfilm kept coming up as a really cool idea. Uh, it turns out that microfilm's rated to last 140 years under the extremes of temperature. We can fit 10,000 pages of information, or the entire adult language curriculum, plus a whole reference library on a cassette that costs $5. The other idea with this is at the time, there weren't that many applications. We had seen these new LEDs coming out. So this was about five years ago when we started this product. Uh, this was the first, as far as we know, the first commercial application for a five watt, uh, a very high intensity LED. So you'll see them in stop signs all the time. What's great about it is that they don't have a filament. They're really robust. You could pound nails with it, and it doesn't break. We're not the first people to suggest I, w I was on a panel a couple days ago where they said a good, a good entrepreneur is naive and unoriginal. Uh, so we're great. Uh, we're, we're destined for greatness. Plenty of organizations in the past have looked at this idea of microfilm projectors for, for school tools. The problem was the bulbs were about $30 or $40. They break. The class can't afford to fix them. Where our LED is rated to last 10 years if you leave it on. Uh, the other thing about it is the optics for this were actually adopted from Fisher Price toys. Peter Fichter in the back, who was one of the people who ran to a toy store, bought a bunch of Fisher Price toys, and said, Why are we paying so much for glass optics when Fisher Price toys have all these great plastic optics? So we figured out how to apply these plastic optics. So we've got seven plastic lenses in there adopted from toys. All together, this product costs $25 at volume, uh, and it's having great results. Now, Design That Matters is a product design company. We differ from a conventional design company in two important ways. We only work for the poor. We only work for what we call social enterprises or organizations, whether for profit or nonprofit, that serve a social mission in developing countries. Those are our clients. We find the best organizations in the world in different areas, education, healthcare, renewable energy, and then we find ways where products can make them more effective. The other way we differ from a conventional product design company, although there are many wonderful designers, students, engineers in this room who have worked with Design That Matters, none of them are our employees. Actually, they're all volunteers. Uh, so when I say who made the Kinkajou, it's actually these folks. There are 180 volunteers from about five different universities, four or five different companies over two and a half years who collaborated on the design of this product. So we've got students from MIT. This is Paul Rose, who is an optics engineer from Opticos. It turns out that Fisher Price, the company that does their optics design, is right across the street. Uh, and we are, I guess the, the third thing about a social entrepreneur that makes you successful is uh, ruthlessness or shamelessness. Uh, so we went over to Opticos, and uh, Steve Fantone 
never knew what was coming. And we said, hey, so uh, we hear that you're the guy that does uh, optics for Fisher Price. How would you like to do, adapt this box of 50 plastic lenses to take the price of this, take the place of this $100 glass lens we've been working with? And he said, well, do I have a choice? Uh, and we said, well, not really. <laughs> Uh, so he put Paul in the job, and that was great work. So, so really, that's that's the key. That's one of the key components of design that matters is that we go out and we find the experts. We find young students, professional volunteers who have had success or who are for looking looking for success. We give them the opportunity to make significant contributions to the global condition. So, what's the result? This is a picture of the Kinkajou outside a classroom in rural Mali. We're demonstrating the size of the image uh, for teachers in the classroom. Uh, we've, we've been doing all kinds of uh, looking for different markets where we can apply this product. So this is a, a uh, I think this is third grade class also in rural Mali. Um, and this is a class picture from a nighttime women's literacy education class. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people in the room who you know, this is great, show me the numbers. So let's look at some numbers. What we're finding, we did a, a two-year pedagogical study with the Kinkajou uh, with something on the order of 4,000 students. And what we're finding is that in terms of student performance, they're given a test before the class and at the end of the class. And Kinkajou students are actually doing better than daytime classes. So there's something about this product that isn't, necess that isn't just change solving the problem of books and lighting, but it's actually changing the way they do adult literacy education in a poor country. So seeing a result like this says to us, we've got to keep going.